Welcome back everybody to Forza Horizon 5 and today we're taking a look at the 2021 Mercedes AMG SL63. Now this is part of the 7th generation of the SL class and uh, yeah this is a few extras to it that are, or a few differences should I say to the previous generation. For instance it's got a fabric lined roof instead of a hard metal top which uh, reduces the weight by around 46 pounds while also lowering the center of gravity which you know is only a good thing. It's also got an all new aluminium space frame uh, self supporting body structure that not only provides greater rigidity but it means it only weigh the shell itself only weighs 595 pounds which is obviously not very much at all. Um, another big difference is this has all wheel drive and rear wheel uh, steering and uh, yeah on the whole I like the look of the car. It's an impressive looking vehicle to be honest. Um, there's nothing really in terms of looks that I dislike like the wheels, like the front, like the side profile, like the rear as well, the curved rear, um, the quad exhaust. The only uh, element I don't like is the um, oh, wrong bit there, sorry. Uh, where is it? Oh, is it gone? Not like an Uh It's a spoiler basically that just comes up and, and stays fixed at a certain rate of speed. I've never been a big fan of those and not a fan of it here. Uh, interior wise though, it's uh, pretty good looking. Uh, we'll put the roof up though just to show you what it looks like. Certainly prefer it with a roof down, if I'm honest. Always looks a. Uh, most convertibles do look better with their roofs down, as opposed to roof up. Interior-wise, it's as you'd expect from Mercedes. Plenty of luxury, plenty of gadgets. A big screen in the middle. Um, unfortunately, not much in the way of analog buttons off the steering wheel. There's a few on the steering wheel, but there's not much outside of that. And as far as I can see, nothing to do with aircon out like that which is a bit of a shame um, those kind of buttons should be analog because you don't want to be fiddling through uh, any um, you know s screen systems over and over again to just try and get to the right bit boot wise as you'd expect with convertible it's been a little bit pinched uh, due to fitting the roof in but it's still decent enough um, but you could have certainly got a lot more space in the back if you hadn't have these useless rear seats which can apparently only accommodate people up to one and a half meters tall, which is just under five feet. So, no full grown full grown adult is getting in those. And to be honest, I wouldn't really want to put a child in those either, because yeah, they don't look spacious. They don't look like you get lots of leg room, and yeah, it just looks extremely cramped. So, in instead of just going for the roof and you know providing a new aluminium space frame, you could have also saved weight further by trucking those two seats out and making the car a little bit lighter because at the end of the day despite all of the weight saving elements to this car it still weighs 4,305 pounds which is verging on SUV territory in terms of weight which yeah isn't particularly great but to help compensate that uh, massive amount of weight this does have a sizable engine it's a 4 litre twin turbocharged V8 that we've become used to from Mercedes as of late as we've seen it in the GTS, the GTR and the uh, GT Black series this is in between the uh, GTR and the GT Black series as it has 577 horsepower and 590 pounds feet of torque so that's actually the same power that you get in the GTR version but because this is an all-wheel drive version and has extra weight you do have 74 extra pounds feet of torque to play with so yeah which is a very useful um, it means that the all-wheel drive system isn't taking away power and it means off the line this is actually pretty damn good but on the whole a uh, overall solid car only real issue like I said has been the weight and the uh, useless rear seats but everything else looks a-okay -okay. so let's get out onto the open road and see what this car can do right here we are at the drag strip so let's see what this car can do in a straight line and then we'll uh, get it around the track so um, yeah this has a, a nine speed automatic gearbox to keep all of that power and torque in check although thankfully uh, the gears don't come massively thick and fast you know a lot of these uh, you know high uh, gear boxes have about five or six of their gears before we even hit 100 mile an hour uh, thankfully that's not the case with this it's got a lovely surge to it uh, which is obviously helped with that torque which there's plenty of and you can probably see in terms of the rear steer wheel steering uh, you can see the wheels are simulated in terms of uh, turning, hope you can see that. Uh, but yeah, that just shows that even though Mercedes can't really cut the weight back all that much in a uh, you know good fashion, although it would weigh a hell of a lot more if it didn't have the aluminium space frame or the uh, fabric roof, 
it's still a weighty car, but they've obviously helped uh, compensate that with the all-wheel drive system, the rear wheel steering, and um, the uh, he healthy amount of torque over the uh, engine in other versions of vehicles that we've had before. Um, still, we're a top-end A-class, and these are the stats. So, on the whole, all fairly good, especially the launch acceleration and speed. Handling is fairly decent for a car of this weight. The braking is the uh, only real downside, which again is no doubt down to the weight. Um, but then again, in a car like this, which is generally used for cruising and just going around town and whatnot, you don't want ultra sharp brakes. But yeah, they aren't really going to be helpful on the track at the end of the day. So yeah, which is a little bit of a shame. Would have liked them to be in a little bit better. But again, it's most likely the weight that is holding those brakes down uh, over anything else because. Yeah, more weight, more momentum means you've got more to slow down. But nonetheless, let's hear what this car sounds like and then we'll talk about it some more. Yeah, that all-wheel drive system is doing a lot of work to keep the weight of this car in check and it is, on the whole, working very well. There's not much in the way of understeer, there's really not any oversteer at all when you're not pushing it too hard. And that means that you can use the power pretty much whenever you want, especially when launching out of corners, which this does really, really nicely. And that rear wheel steering is obviously helping keep the front going around the corners. As those rear wheel steer, that means that the front is going to come around a lot easier. So, yeah, on the whole, handling wise, it's pretty good. It's nothing exciting or overly fun, but it is, you know, manageable and it is, you know, more than capable of dealing with the power and acceleration that it's got going on. Acceleration wise, it's pretty damn quick. Not 16 three seconds flat, it'll do not to 107.1 seconds. And in terms of this game, at least, it can do 203 miles an hour. That's probably more realistically 180, 190 in real life, though. But still, that is plenty of speed on the go for a sub-600 horsepower car that has this amount of weight. Now, as you can see, it does get tail-happy when you uh, are pushing it. But it's, again, manageable because of the uh, all-wheel drive system, because of the rear-wheel rear, rear -wheel steering. It's more than capable of, you know, easily getting come back. Again push it too hard as well you might well get some understeer so it can be either way but understeer or oversteer it's more than manageable to deal with so yeah on the whole a uh, likeable car it's nothing amazing it's certainly not the best that Mercedes AMG have done especially with this engine the GT Black Series for instance is a hilariously quick track car and this is obviously not like that but it's at the end of the day going for something a bit different so uh, yeah on the whole I like it like I said the weight is a bit of an issue, the brakes could be better, and those rear seats are, yeah, at the end of the day, completely useless, but still, on the whole, a uh, fantastic uh, GT Cruiser, quite frankly. So, um, yeah, and another fantastic SL car, um, as far as I'm concerned. So, yeah, you can get this car by getting 20 points in the current festival playlist. Very easy to get, especially if you've already got the four points from doing the rivals. So, basically, just do the trial, that'll give you 10 points, do the seasonal championship to get the Lotus Esprit, which is another car added in via the festival players, then take the photo of the Lotus Esprit and you'll have 20 points there and then. So, very easy to get and uh, yeah, a car that is well worth getting. Nonetheless, so thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.